a product of the North Beach. I was actually born here, I was raised here, I went to Burney Elementary, Adams, Veer Off. I didn't know we found out when we were close to us, but uh, nobody's perfect. Anyway, uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm really glad to be here. Um, one of the things I did, well, the smartest things I did, I think, way back in the 1970s and 80s, uh, I think the middle 70s, I was born in 1960, so middle 70s, I was a teenager, and my sisters, my older sister said, you know what, the lady who was treating her lawn is really long, why don't you go over there, well, why don't you cut it, you just, just cut it, you can see the senior citizen, it would just be a nice thing to do. So I went over there, I cut her lawn, I, you know, a teenager who didn't know anything much, much about it, and I actually did it with a hand paper too, so it was tough, got a lot of it. A lot of energy back in those days. And uh, about two hours later, I uh, get, get a knock on the door, and it was a neighbor lady, and she said, Oh my, thank you so much. And she gave me a $5 bill. And I thought, Wow, this is really cool. I, you know, and, and, and so I like to think that's, I've never told the story before, but I like to think that's where my career in uh, landscape construction business started. Went to El Camino, got my degree in ornamental horticulture, and have been landscaping over. 30 years, well, 35 years. I don't know, the, the decade starts to roll out. Right? <laughs> so, so one of the things, so, uh, about four years ago, the uh, after the last presidential election, you know, there's a lot of things that the people vote on. One of the things was on GMOs, uh, GMO foods. Now, GMOs have been around about 20 years or so. And there were no long-term studies on it, and that's a whole different thing, so we're not, I'm not really going to talk about that this much, but if you ever want me to talk about it, I'd be more than happy to. Um, by the way, they, uh, I started getting a lot of calls from people, and they said, you know what, uh, GMO labeling got voted down, I forgot what the proposition was, or, or the initiative, but it got voted down, so we want to uh, build our own vegetable gardens. And I said, great, we can do that, we can build them, that's just, it's like building Legos, you know, we put three variation system. We put in a lot of vegetable gardens, and then about two or three months later, people started getting their water bills coming in. <laughs> like, oh, well, yeah, gee, I don't know if I can afford to grow my own food because you know it's it, water started going up. Does anybody? Two questions. Has anybody noticed? Has anybody heard there's a drought? <laughs> I would have asked that question. Five years ago, it's like, huh? Because you turn, every time you turn on the faucet, there was always water. And 20 years ago, a little over 20 years ago, my company landscaped the Manhattan Beach Botanical Garden, which was, at that time, was a really cutting edge garden. It was, uh, it's a native garden, and back then people were like, what? You guys want to do what? You want to create a native garden? Back then, nobody had heard of a native garden, it's over 20 years ago. Now, it's like the cool thing. In fact, we're actually, the water district's actually giving people, you pull your grass out. Has anybody heard of that? You know, so, uh, it seems like my journey is just kind of in, you know, water conservation. And then we got into building ponds and waterfalls for a while. But the water we circulate, so it doesn't use much water. And then, uh, after this thing about the GMOs and people wanting to grow their own food, I said, you know what? There's got to be a better way. There's got to be a way that we can grow food and that we don't have to use as much water. And so it's like, the, uh, if you tie all of this together, I started doing the reading and research, and it's called sustainability. And sustainability, I'll tell you, sustainability, my definition, there's a lot of definitions, you can go to Wikipedia, but my definition of sustainability is this. Sustainability is living today without borrowing from tomorrow. Something we can read. Living today without borrowing from tomorrow. I'm going to show you a scene out of my backyard. Now, I told you I love Redondo Beach. I still live here. I'm in North Redondo. And I'm going to show you a picture of, of my backyard. Uh -oh. One of the, oops, one of the um, pictures of my backyard. Okay, here. Boom. That's my backyard. So I just told you about, about the definition of sustainability. That's lettuce growing. And it's growing vertically, and it gets better. It grows with water that recycles over and over again. Has anybody heard of gray water? Okay. Now, isn't that the bomb? You take a shower or you wash your clothes. That's one use. And then, you know, you have a plumber or environmental person. 
it actually cuts a hole in your wall, and then you can actually, with that water that you just used, you can use it again to water like your fruit trees. Isn't that great? You use it twice. In fact, West Basin Water District has a big program right now. There's a big push. They're really trying to get people to explore gray water. Well, I, oh, go ahead. I just want to make a comment about that. Native plants eat that. So while they're encouraging you to plant native plants, you know, they're encouraging gray water to come out of the air right, yeah, Absolutely right. That's, yeah, that, that's a whole different uh, program. In fact, um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about that I'm going to, uh, for, for a whole hour next Saturday at the Manhattan Beach Botanical Garden. I'm going to be giving a talk on preparing for El Nino. You want to know how to prepare, because all the evidence is there, and it's pretty scary. So I'm going to talk about how to deal with that, how to deal with El, El Nino, and I'm going to be considering that too. Okay, so so gray water. Uh -huh. you know, I, I talked to my plumber about the gray water uh -huh. thing, and Torrance said it's against city ordinance. Like break water. Okay. Five years ago, City of LA was against it. They issued four permits. Five years ago, now it's in the thousands. Did they permit to break water? Um, ten yes. Uh, okay, Charlie. Gray water mandatory in all new construction in LA now? I don't know about that. You see I, the family, I think they made it so it can be. Oh, okay. Well, here's what's been the, the, the top. The drought has changed the dynamics of everything. In fact, uh, did anybody read the Daily Breeze? Two days ago, a uh, front page headline, right in the middle, says DWP raising rates because we're yeah. saving water. Yeah. Yeah. We're saving too much water. They have an infrastructure to pay. They've got to pay their employees, their trucks, their big buildings, their insurance. They're a business. And if, they are, if they, you know, they're getting their revenues and it says, oh, uh, you know, they have a budget and if they have to pay their employees this and then they're only bringing in this much, well, they're like, well, we have to pay our bills. I mean, the only, we can't go out of business, you know, we're a public entity. So the only way we know how to make money is to charge more. So by saving water, water prices are going up. By not saving water, you go up to that higher tier and you're going to be paying more for your water than your rent. It's, it's terrible. But it, it, are we helpless? Are we like little mice that are just helpless? We just have to take it? No. There's something that we can do. And I'm going to... Come on, slide here. Okay, so I, I talk about how it all begins with the big picture, it all begins here. Science of nature teaches us about community. When, and I uh, quote John Muir, when, when we try to pick out anything by itself, we find it hitched to everything else in the universe. So I'm kind of backing up a little bit here. Okay, this is the, some of the big challenges we have as a society. Uh, we have a big mobile oil refinery in Torrance. We have even closer, uh, we have Chevron. Does anybody know why El Segundo is El Segundo? Yeah, it's, it's the, it, well, it, uh, it was came about 100 years ago. They did the whole town because it's the second uh, uh, plant, uh, Chevron plant. So that's how the uh, whole city got its name. Okay, so uh, here, here's the thing. The big picture is everything is connected I'm with their help too, so I'm gonna I'm gonna shift things. Remember, sustainability is about a whole system. It's not just about picking up trash. Uh, come on in. Yeah. Okay, so it's not just about picking up trash. So there's the big picture on top, the earth, there's the lady that's you know, predominant. Okay, and then you see some organic <laughs> strawberries, and then you see blood. All this is really tied together. Uh, everything's connected. At the cellular level, we're connected to food. Uh, our food is everything. And I remember, I got this, I started getting very, very fascinated by this when I read about, uh, you know, GMOs. It just opened up this whole world to me, and I'm like, wow, the world needs to know this. Speaking of health, how do you define success? Isn't this generally on the block of a lot of people? You know, I want the big house, I want the big car. But then, I'm going to add a tagline to this. Personal success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. So you can have all the money in the world. You know, Stephen Jobs, do you really think when he put billions of dollars in the world, uh, in, in the bank, do you think, what was he thinking about? He knew about when he was going to die, what day, what week, what month. Do you really think he was thinking about the billions of dollars? It had to go beyond that. So no matter how wealthy or successful we are, uh, success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. 
So living the life of our dreams means nothing without our help. It's, it's super high on, on the urgency uh, factor. Now, outstanding health begins with making a commitment to ourselves. Now, the problem with modern society is that it seems that everybody is trying to be skinny. And I'll tell you that skinny should not be the goal. The goal should be that we want to be lean. And lean is an acronym that stands for lifestyle, exercise, attitude, and nutrition. So this is a goal that we can live with. This is something, you know what, our body types are, are what they are, so why wrap yourself with guilt? Again, this is a goal that we can all uh, strive to be. Okay, uh, we'll be here. Medicine is not healthcare. Medicine, food is healthcare. Medicine is sick care. You're managing sickness. Okay. So this all ties in with, with uh, food. Um, nutrition. Uh, well, we just had a talk, so I'm not going to talk a lot about the nutritional part. We use. We just had a, a great. Uh, Diane did a great job on this. Um, 34% of the U.S. population is obese and have health issues, and those are just the children. Two, almost 3 billion adults have weight-related weight diseases. So we need to, nobody's going to, if you think that somebody's going to knock on your door and they're going to say, I'm here, you know, from the U.S. government, and I'm here to tell you everything about health, nutrition, what's good for your body, I'm sorry. It's, that's not going to happen. You've got to take control of your own body, of your own body, of your life. You've got to do it for yourself. Nobody's got to do it for you. There's, why do you think there's still McDonald's? You know, if you think you're getting healthy ingredients, uh, let's say you're a, you're a vegan or vegetarian, and you go to McDonald's, and you say, okay, surely there's got to be something here. Did you know that uh, McDonald's french fries, you would assume yeah. they potatoes and then fried in grease, two ingredients. Okay, well that would surely fit under those, remember we just heard a good presentation of more than five degrees. You do the research, McDonald's french fries have 19 ingredients. And they're not vegan. They're, if, you're, if you're like, don't want animal products, you'll get them with McDonald's french fries. This is all, it is all online. Um, okay, now this is something that, okay, this is uh, Louis Ignaro, he's a Nobel Prize winner. I'm, I'm a real big believer that if you're going to uh, study about food and stuff, you should have science behind it, not just buzzwords or fad, fad words. This is a really, really cool thing. Who here has ever been a doctor? Every hand would go up. Who here has ever gotten medicine? Every hand would go up. Okay, when we were little kids, if it got real bad, you go to the doctor. Okay, did you know that uh, the reason why I had, had the doctor up there, okay, so he won a Nobel Prize. What did he find in his studies? <coughs> did every, everything in our body, all our energy is tied to our blood, our, our heart, and then the heart being able to get those the blood out, healthy blood to the vessels. Every part of our body is connected. This is called, this is your artery right here, and so that's, those are your, your blood cells. What that doctor found was that when you eat right, your your body, your your blood, there's actually uh, something called an endothelium layer. Big word, but all it means is it's medicine bottles. They create they create something called nitric oxide that tells your body to make the medicine. So if your body needs to repair, let's say you run a marathon. I ran one too many back in the 80s. Ran about 50 marathons. Uh, I really tore my body down a lot, but my body was able to come back. And if you do any type of exercise, you're tearing your body down. But if you eat right, it actually repairs itself. And so that's what this is saying, is that there's microscopic medicine bottles that the medicine bottle opens up and it allows the medicine out. It also works the reverse way. If you eat bad, the medicine bottles shut. And then you've got to go to a doctor, you get the testing, and hopefully he's going to give you the right type of medicine, the right amount, and he's going to charge you for it. <laughs> okay, so isn't it better to have your body eat right, have your body make your own medicine, give you the right amount, and it's free. It's, a, it's, a, it's amazing. This is actually science. You can look this up. You can look up that doctor, uh, Louis, Louis Ignaro, one of the Nobel Prize 
uh, for at the, went to UCLA School of Medicine. I actually know somebody who uh, who's had discussions with him. It's really cutting edge science. This whole thing about EV right isn't just a fad. This is science based. Okay. So this this is a great slide. Uh, the world's best kept secret is out. Your body produces its own medicine, but it doesn't when you're a couch potato. So there's the couch potato. Come on in. Okay, couch potato. We eat French fries, hamburgers, and so on. Potato chips. And the blood sticks together. And these medicine bottles right here, you see they're just coated with this uh, sticky stuff. And they're closed. It uh, is not about the medicine to come out. And then, how to open the pharmacy. Eat more fruits. Vegetables. If you do meat, I would do the wild caught salmon. That, that's about that, that, that's about the most healthy thing you can do if you're going to eat meat. Okay, here it is again. A healthy endothelium, that, that layer in all your vessels, blood vessels, releases a chemical messenger called nitric oxide, which prompts the body to make its own medicine. So, science based. This is it. This is it, folks. R write it down. Look at it later. It's amazing stuff. So. This is a good one. I want to give you another goal. Besides lean, I want to also talk to you about what the goal should be as we get older. Um, as we get older, our goal should be that everything works and nothing hurts. Is that a great goal? Okay. And, and we can do that. So, uh, medicine, the, so if you eat right, as we just had, had the speaker before me, you, you want to raise the lows. You know, there's antidepressants, pain relievers, anti-inflammatories. Eating right will actually, the medicine bottles inside of you will actually do that, and it will lower the blood cholesterol and lower the uh, blood pressure. So, nitric oxide, that's the, that's the magic piece. I, I don't want to get too into the science of it, but just to show you what the end result is. For our heart, So, he's eating all the right stuff, he's exercising, he's doing that lean, lifestyle, exercise, attitude, nutrition, and look at, you know, they're not stuck together, they're actually separated, so that means more energy, and look at those medicine bottles, the medicine's just flowing. Isn't that amazing? So, here we have again. This is just a review. Lifestyle, exercise, attitude, and nutrition. It, and it's it's not that hard to do in today's world renewal of stuff, and it just it happens. Okay, now also too, just to make eating a little bit more simplified, I like to uh, I'm also a certified health coach too, just something I do for fun. Um, there's something called traffic light eating, and so I like to, especially if, uh, if I'm dealing with kids, I like to say, here, this is a green food, this is yellow, this is red. I'll illustrate a little bit more. We have green light foods, that means go. So foods that are not manufactured, they're naturally colorful, they don't have co uh, artificial colors in them, they can be eaten raw, low in calories, high in nutrients, eat as much as you want. Uh, and usually they're found around, I'll, I'll, I'll make a comment about, about the process thing too. Um, typically when you shop, you, you go to Vons or you go to, it used to be Albertsons, whatever they are now. Okay, so you go around the, the center of the store and where they usually have produce, it's on the outer edges. What's in the middle? <laughs> okay, the, okay. The, 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 the cake boxes, you know, all the processed stuff that's in boxes. I think that's what you know people generally think about. So, you know, when you start eating food, I mean, you eat raw almonds. I mean, you're starting to process that in your mouth. You know, you do the digestive process. So, I think it, what, what it is is anything that's in a box, um, potato chips, packaged stuff that's that's in a, that's ground up that they pretty much well, it, they sell it for taste. So, um, and I'll, I'll have a few things. Okay, yellow light foods. Foods that are, they're not as nutrient dense, but they're okay, but you want to, you want to use caution. And then, uh, what about that muffin? 
red light foods. I'm not saying stop, well, I'm, I'm not saying stop eating, but I'm saying stop, think about it. And I got something from uh, uh, Tony Robbins, a motivational speaker. I uh, he's, he's about 10,000 people over at the LA Convention Center this weekend. And I got, I got something from him, a quote, I'll never forget. He said, your destiny, your, the decisions you make uh, the decisions you make are made by, that will create your destiny. Your, your destiny is created by the decisions you make every day. So every day we make thousands of decisions. So your decision, hmm, should I go to McDonald's or should I go over to MyFit Foods? Or, or if you don't have time. Or if you have time, you know, do I go, do I go out to dinner? Do I go out to Cheesecake Factory and have that big slice of <laughs> cheesecake? Or do I have something that's more healthy? Your, your decisions you make every day, all of those add up to who you are today. Um, do not use your stomach as a treasure. I, I need not say any more on this. Okay, you're not born a winner, you're not born a loser, you're born a chooser. So, you know, nobody's born rich, nobody's born poor, nobody, nobody's born anything. We're born choosers. That's the only thing in life we have is our, is our ability to choose. Okay, make the right choice. Now, why is organic the right choice for parents? Well, uh, we don't, uh, I'll just kind of glide, glide through some of these. Phytonutrients, um, okay, you could go to a, You can take a multivitamin, which has, you know, it, you know, selects like maybe 10 grams of vitamin A and 5 grams of vitamin C, you know, you could, you could or no, it actually has bigger, uh, bigger uh, percentages than that. But the idea is that, you know, you can get a multivitamin or you can bite into an apple. Now, did you know an apple may not have as many, as much percentage of vitamin A, however, when it works in conjunction with all, and this, by the way, is all the stuff that's in vitamin A. When it works, when you bite into the apple, it's a powerhouse that you're biting into. And that synergy, now what do I mean by synergy? Um, my company, we build waterfalls and ponds and stuff. Okay, if you have a 50 pound, let's say one man can pick up 50 pounds. So he picks a 50 pound boulder, and that's his limit. He can't pick up anymore. Okay, now if you have a boulder that's 130 pounds, you're thinking, well, you're going to need three guys. Not really. You're going to, those, if you get two guys, there's this thing called synergy. When you have two people working together, they can actually lift a whole lot more weight than if it was just one sing, single person. Same thing with fruits and vegetables. They have this synergy inside that they can do much more than if you were to, just to get it in, in a pill capsule form. And so, uh, a couple of buddies of mine, it's about a 3,000 3, 3, pound boulder. Now, th that's Photoshop, of course. <laughs> Just to illustrate, though, that, that you know the power of synergy, I, I thought I'd do a photo there. Um, okay, we have to start asking ourselves, how long are we going to ignore the obvious that our meat-eating culture is not environmentally sustainable? Um, I don't have time to go into this right now, but um, um, let me just go to that side. You are what you eat, and, and uh, you know, what, for example, chicken, if your chickens are eating GMO corn, um, the eggs they produce you know, are not going to be nutritionally as good for you as like free grain. And if you ever want to see Redondo Beach chickens, uh, I've got about 30 of them in my backyard, and I'll talk more about that later. <laughs> I've got a micro farm in my backyard. Okay, now we're going to go into a little bit about um, I, if, if you want to say who, okay, we've all heard of the drought, and we, and we want our water bill to go down. We all want to make a difference with the drought. Did you know if you eat one less hamburger a week, that's the equivalent of a whole week worth of taking a bath? I mean, you could really make a huge difference in this drought just by eating less meat and having more of a plant-based diet. Um, here's, a, here's another one, too. And these are just some of the statistics. Uh, 100, well, 144 hamburgers a year, you know, that's like one every few days, uh, over 100,000 gallons of water. That's a lot of bath water. Okay, uh, a plant-based diet indirectly consumes about 600 gallons less of water per day. And the reason for that being is, what do cows eat? What do cows eat? They eat grass. They, you know, they, they eat products from the ground. What do the products of the ground eat? Water. 
a lot of water. The water district is telling us, pull out your grass because it takes up, it sucks up so much water. Well, what does a cow eat? They eat grass. They eat a lot of it. And so if you really want to make a difference, eat less meat. I'm not saying eat. Uh, and actually, if you if you don't eat land animals, which take a lot of water, then you can eat seafood. I mean, they live in water. So it's really not, and, and it's actually better for you, especially the wild caught salmon. Oh, uh, sock eye salmon. Okay, uh, just a little slide to keep us on track here with health. So weight loss, okay, so, so weight loss is what people should, you know, weight loss is what people are after. Get on that scale, you weigh less, that's a, uh, -uh. What you want is you want fat loss. We don't have an overweight problem, we have an over fat problem. And so, I uh, want to keep us on track with that. Okay, next slide. Ah, uh, drought. This, by the way, is a, a current picture of uh, California's largest, second largest water reservoir. So we are in trouble. I mean, this is science. This is, NASA came out about a year ago and said that, no, they came out about earlier this year, and they said that uh, we have, California has, their Jake M. Getty, their a senior water scientist, said we have about a year of water left in reserve. And people started, <laughs> they started panicking. They, I mean, who, who you have is the higher authority of NASA, right? Because they all need some neat scientific tools. So uh, their time said, okay, well, no, we won't be out of water, just out of water in California, but they're gonna be piping it in. Uh, they have always piped it in. Does anybody know how much Water Cal Southern California uses a gallon and a half, oh, a billion and a half gallons per day of water. They pipe in. 20% of our electricity is used to bring in that water. So when you waste water, you're also wasting electricity. Um, I want to open you up to aeroponics. So, so I, I asked, um, or, or I said that people were interested in uh, growing food and saving water. So if you are, there's something I want you to explore. It's called aeroponics. So it saves over, this is uh, Epcot World, Disney World. They have Chicago here Airport. You can grow on the roofs. There's uh, restaurants growing them on uh, six stories in Manhattan, New York. If you want to see examples of this, I have a micro farm in my backyard, aeroponic. You where the water, there's a 20 gallon chamber right here, the water tiny little pump pushes water up there and it, uh, it's all self-contained. So the result is you can grow food in about a half the time and it recycles water. It saves about 90 to 95% water over a traditional soil garden. And it's vertical. So it's amazing stuff. Okay, and then you can, you can put them into a landscape. So we have here the front of the skies. I put the you, you can get creative and put some, some stuff down. That's the Manhattan Beach uh, house over on in the tree section. Um, if you have a koi pond, this is called aquaponics because what we did was instead of using a pump in the cistern right here, we put a secondary pump right here. The subcompound we built the koi pond, and then we have the water shooting up here to the pond, nutrient rich pond water goes up here, you can see the lettuce and tomatoes growing stuff, and then it goes back down and drains it back down here. What do fish produce? They, fish, they produce ammonia. So this ammonia actually feeds the plants and then it takes the ammonia and then it sends it back to the pond. Great, great stuff. Uh, drip irrigation saves water. You want to save, it's a great way to save water. So these are native plants with uh, drip irrigation and then you cover it with mulch. If you want to know more about that, like I said, next Saturday at uh, the Manhattan Eastern Town Square, and I'm giving a, a talk on this from 10 to 11 in the morning. Okay, foods that boost your immune, immune system, vitamin C, vitamin E, and so on. Um, 12, I'm sorry? Is that your drink? Oh, same thing. Oh, God. Garlic. Oh, God. Yeah. Omega 3 fatty acids. Now this, I got from the Tony Robbins, um, uh, he has his own thing on, on health and wellness, amazing stuff, he's able to simplify. This right here, 12 steps of pure energy, gifts that you can give yourself, um, aerobic energy, essential oils. I mean, if anybody knows about uh, omega oils, they're really great for, uh, especially omega-3s. 
And you can go to Whole Foods, it's one of the only places I know where you can get it. There's this stuff called Udo's Oil, U-D-O. And um, it was, it, it, it's this perfect blend uh, put together by a, a PhD named uh, Erasmus Udo. Anyway, you can get it at Whole Foods. I could drink a shot in the morning, I drink a shot in the afternoons. Helps me keep my weight off, and um, it just balances everything. It kind of like, uh, arthritis runs in my family, and so I felt it coming on. I started drinking the oodles, and the, it kind of like, like the Tin Man in the Wizard of Oz, and the oil. <laughs> yeah, that's, what the, that's what the oodles oil does. So the essential oils are, are really good. How do you spell it? U D O. Oodles oil. Uh, Whole Foods. Whole Foods has it. Yeah, it's a, it's a perfect blend of Omega 369. And I, I'll, actually, I have a shake every morning. It's a, it's a protein shake. I actually put the shot of Udo's oil in it. It's amazing. Amazing for your... Right, I would suggest go on Facebook and you can read about it. And Udo's oil. Okay, help save water with our plant-based meals. On average, like if you do a vegetarian diet, it, use a, you'll use about half the water that you would if you're kind of meat-based at. Now, get inspired and create something that inspires other people. And so, you know, that's what I'm devoted to right now. I'm devoted to inspiring everybody, empowering everybody to say, you know what, uh, we want to empower our own body's natural processes. Open up that pharmacy by eating right and eating healthy and uh, getting some exercise. So Michael Jordan, I can accept failure Everyone fails at something, but I cannot accept not trying. So you have the 10-day challenge before you. I promise you, if you do this 10-day challenge, it's going to change your life. Um, about 10 years ago, I went to a, a Tony Robbins event, and he had this thing about health and wellness. And he said, you know what? The stuff I was talk talking to you about today. And so I thought, yeah, because there was not a bigger meat eater than I was uh, back 10 years ago. Every day, you have to and steak for lunch and chicken and just you know, fried foods. I ate really bad. And I did the that, like, Tony Robbins has a 10 day challenge. I just cold turkey. I'm like, okay, I'm going to try this. My health, my energy levels improved so amazingly. You know, I mean, I, I just felt like Superman. I thought, you know, I'm never going to go back to the old way of eating again. Being fit feels so good. Uh, no, nothing tastes as good as being fit feels. I'll put it that way. Um, the question isn't who's going to let me, the question is who's going to stop me. So you've got to be determined. And the time for action is now, there's no, oops, there's no backup emergency plan. So this whole idea about water conservation, about taking care of your health, uh, aquaponics, aeroponics, all of this kind of ties together. And if you want more information, Next Saturday, the, I'll, I'll tell you, next Saturday and the first Saturday of every month, I host something called a sustainability event at my house, which is 2609 Vargas Way. You can see me afterwards, I can do part. Uh, but uh, it's the first Saturday, so the next one is going to be two weeks from today, from 2 to 4 p.m. How does it work? So I'm going to be talking about how to build a veggie, veggie garden that recycles water. How to save 90% water on your organic garden. I have a, rain, I have a 5,000 gallon rainwater harvesting system underground in my backyard. You can actually see this. PBS television was there uh, a few months ago. They were doing some filming. Um, and so on. Uh, and there's my website down there, enviroscapela.com. So um, I try to make uh, I try to make everything um, pretty. So I make I try to make sustainability pretty and. I try to make it so that it, it, it's uh, got, you know, uh, to, I don't have nothing to sell you. I don't, it, my whole goal is to inspire you and to empower you to get healthy, you guys. And I think that if all of us do this, and the cost is that if we don't do this, you know, if you don't change anything now, um, you know, people that, that are having a bad diet and they don't do anything about it now, what's the cost a year from now, two years from now? Five years from now, you know, will it be poor health? Will it be death? Will, I, I don't know. I, but all I do know is that if we start on a positive, you know, lifestyle, exercise, attitude, and nutrition, it's, it will put you on a mo the most amazing path you've ever been. So, um, I think.
That's about it. So you know what? You might be, you know, maybe there's some doubts you have. Maybe there's some fears. And if you have fears, you know, the, the, because there's a storm out there. There's a huge storm. And the fear will tell you, you know, you can't do this. You cannot face the storm. And you have to have the resolve to look the storm straight in the eye and say, 